you can use this for any number of things. Um, in fact, we're going to next use it for uh, some data that I pulled from uh, canine distemper values in wolves and bears at Yellowstone National Park. So if I were to say something like, okay, we're going to graph distemper values in wolves and bears at Yellowstone National Park, where we know where they were um, darted. So we have GIS location, we know where it is, we have some sort of value for scaling. Now we also know um, how to grab locations, so we can track just part of the US map and scale it to just where Yellowstone is and grab that data. We can do it in multiple colors. Um, so we're gonna go through that just kind of a uh, full case study of, of this information. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is confirm that you have this file, canine distemper, and if you click on it, you'll see that it is a data frame and it tells you a bunch of information, most of which we're not going to use. And full disclosure, the uh, Latin long on this are totally made up. Um, because I couldn't find the data set that had this, but it will at least give us an idea of what this would look like. But the, the tiger values are real. All of the rest of it is real, I just randomized this. Okay. So first we have to load this in. I'm gonna call it distemper. What do we do? What's the function that reads in a data frame? Read.table. And what do we have to give read.table? It's the first thing. You don't have to say file equals, but I tend to, especially in instruction, you can't just put it there. Um, and then I'm going to tab complete because that is a long name and I do not want to mistype it. So I don't feel like checking it. And what else should I give it? What's something you can see from the data that I showed you? Header equals all caps true. And we don't have row names, so we'll just leave it at that. And we can see that it got added to our list here somewhere. There we go. And because it is observations and that's what to do, uh, variables, we know that it is a data frame. Easy enough to work with. And we've already pulled our US, so we can use that, right? So let's, because Yellowstone's clearly not the map we're using right now. It's not in Indiana, it's that link. And then what, are we, what do we use? What are the parameters we use to limit where we're actually grabbing this so that we can zoom in on the data that we care about? So, X lim and Y lim. And in this case, uh, again, I used Google to pull logical boundaries. I do not know these off the top of my head. That'd be an extremely impressive skill. But I just went on Google Maps and right clicked on either side of, of uh, Yellowstone and pulled. Now in this case, it is good to make sure that your um, parentheses match. So plot is there, everything is nice and closed. And it should come up as a plot. It may take a second with all of the people working on it. screen might be too small. Sometimes this happens. Usually it tells you. Well, that's fine. Is anybody else getting a map? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I am getting a map. It's the middle of the ocean because I put in the wrong limits. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when I'm reading two different things? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is going on? Always check your command. There. I just had the wrong, the wrong lats. Uh, that is a beautiful graph of the ocean. 
Uh, why are you being finicky now? Because I still got it wrong. Man, I'm just having one half of a day. Okay, USA. Oh, because I have in the notes, I have it swapped. Give me one minute. In the notes, I put Y first, and that's not good to try to on the fly change things. A good practice to get into when you are running into errors is the first thing you should do is check your command and make sure it is what you expect it to be. And then make sure that your packages are correct if you're getting an error. So there were some people running into an issue where raster wasn't loading. They turned off CPNR but forgot to reload raster. Always check to make sure that you have the packages that are there. Um, check your command. And then if you need to check something that's more basic version of your command, and work up towards the more complicated. There we go. Turns out when you're not plotting the ocean, it's a little bit prettier. So you should see something similar to this. It may not come out as far. Oh, that's fun. Anybody notice a problem with this? That's Washington. <laughs> so I still can I. Yeah, we're both reviewing this from the other side. Reviewing this from inside the outside. Earth. So we have the X flipped, which means we have the this guy flipped. So let's do this. I've never seen it do that before. That's really quite fun. There we go. <laughs> Took a couple of chances, but we've got it. Always have some sort of expectation too about what you're plotting so you can actually check that kind of thing. Okay, so if you're unaware, Yellowstone is kind of in this area. It's multiple states. So now if we want to plot points, we can use points, right? And what would our x be if we wanted to do the data out of the distemper? What is our x? And how do we tell it to do longitude from that data part? Yep. Just temper. Dollar, and it'll actually come up so I can fit, pick the right one so it's spelled correctly and capitalized correctly. And our y is going to be similar. I'm going to make them blue and I'm going to use 19 again. So that doesn't really give us a lot of information, but at least it's plotting in the right place, right? So we're seeing that we have this, but we want to add that scale factor, right? We can't just plot the dots and expect us to have the information baked in. <laughs> so What do we do for scaling? How do we squash those values to be less different? Yep. Square root of distemper. Spell that out. Specifically, the tighter. And then we want to divide that by the maximum distemper tighter to make sure that that matches our data. And then how do we add that to our points? What's the parameter there? It's still on screen from last time we used it. CEX. I don't know what that stands for. And from previous tests, 50 sounds like a good way to do it. Oh, we have to remap. And now you can see that it's good. <laughs> <laughs> you can play with 
the scaling to, to change it because it does depend upon how it did the, the Y limbs. Um, but you can at least see now that you can you can take a data frame of real data. You know how to subset those those columns now, and you can scale that to be useful stuff. You could also take information from different data frames and glue them together and get that to be mapped. This is really really helpful for all your pretty poster images. <laughs>